Hi, I am Arnie Jacobson and this is Arnie Jacobson TV and this is the ZV-1 from Sony. And today we're going to be looking at the settings to use to capture the very best video. And if you like this, why don't you consider subscribing? Just click that big red subscribe button, click the bell icon so you won't miss anything in the future. Also check the show notes in the description for even more details. Before we begin with the setup, there are three buttons that you're going to use over and over again. So let's take a look at those. Number one is the mode button, which allows you to access different photo and video modes. The second button is the C1 button, and it gives you instant background defocus. Uh, in other words, it allows for either clear or blurry backgrounds, and it does it easily. You just hit that button. Then on the back, there is the C2 button, and this is the product showcase button and it allows the camera to instantly focus on whatever is nearest the camera. So if you're holding a product or, you know, or something like that closer to the camera, it will, the camera will automatically, boom, focus on it. And it does that by turning off the face eye autofocus. Now this is really helpful if you like to do uh, some kind of product uh, videos or for that matter, anything that you would want to put closer to the camera. The first thing you're going to want to do is press the mode button. And you'll notice you get all these selections in the back and using the scroll wheel, move up or down until you get to movie mode, which is that right there. Hit the center button. Now, you want to make sure that you choose manual mode and hit enter. Now to begin the process of setting things up, you're going to want to hit the menu button on the back of the camera. Now this whole thing might seem a little bit overwhelming at first, but fear not. We don't need to do everything that we see. We're just going to we'll see how easy it is as we move through the menus. So pressing the menu button, you'll notice at the top there are six menus. We're moving from left to right. Some of these are for photography and as this video is for video users, um, we're going to skip some of these things. And the scroll wheel on the back of the camera allows you to move up or down, just like that, or left and right, just like that. And I have a little tip for you that, that's going to make some of this go a lot easier. You'll notice the FN button here. By tapping that FN button, you can easily move through the tabs at the top, and it goes from left to right. Now I have not figured out a way, I don't know if it can go the other direction, but this makes things a lot faster. So we're starting out on tab one, page one. Scroll down to aspect ratio. You'll notice right there, we want that to be 16 by 9. Next up, let's scroll over to page 3, and you should see at the top where it says shoot mode, it should be manual exposure. That should be already there because we've already set it up previously. On page 5, we want this to be uh, focus mode, we want that to be custom autofocus. We want focus area. Notice I scroll down. We want focus area to be wide. There are a lot of choices, but we want wide. Next down up is <laughs> next on the list is face eye autofocus set. And this should be on just like that. Notice going down the list, you want subject detection to be human 
and you want right left I select to be auto and everything else should be on hit the menu button to go back pre autofocus on focus frame color white and autofocus area auto clear should be off we're still on tab one we're going to skip over to page seven on page seven we're going to look down at ISO the ISO should be 125 so you can have all these choices but we want the very best we can so we're going to go with 125 moving down you'll notice the ND filter we want this off because we're going to set up a custom button for that metering mode multi and price excuse me face priority in multi we also want that on all right let's skip over to page nine and we're going to have white balance at auto for now this can easily be changed and we're going to show you how to do that also priority set in white balance should be standard the DRO auto HDR you want to keep that at D range optimizer it could because this really results in the most pleasing true to life results and at some point in the future maybe you might want to start fiddling around with picture profiles but as this is kind of the basics we're going to go with this for now you want to have creative style as standard and picture effect and picture profile we're going to keep those off for the time being let's skip to page 10 and soft skin effect um, I keep this off you can play with it and see what you think uh, it's supposed to uh, you know help with wrinkles and and that kind of stuff but in my opinion it really makes for a plasticky look um, but again you may think differently you have off you have a, a kind of a medium and you have a, a stronger version of it I don't like any of them so I'm keeping it off and we're going to skip now to page 11 and go down to peaking display everything else is going to stay the same we're just going to go down to peaking display and I like to use peaking uh, I like to keep this on and you can choose whether you want it to be mid or whatever and whatever your color is you can certainly change those in the future and last but not least we're going to move to page 12 and everything on this page you're just going to keep the same product showcase we're going to have we have a special button for that so we can leave it off everything else on off off we're good on this so far that's everything for tab one let's move on to tab two and remember that trick I showed you hit the FN button and it will easily move you to the next tab now we're in the movie section and again check that exposure mode make sure that that it says manual exposure and the first thing we want to talk about is the file format let's go in here you'll notice you've got three different ones to choose from XAVCS 4k the XAVC SHD and AVC HD we're going to forget about the last one entirely we want XAVC S 4k I'm going to hit that button in the middle there next down we want to go to record setting and again you'll notice you've got a couple of choices here because we're going for the best quality we can 
we want to choose 24p at 100m. 24p is kind of like cinema standard, and the 100p just means that more information is being loaded onto the card. So 24p, 100m. There is one downside to setting the uh, file format as XAVC 4K, and that is that some computers um, can't handle that much data. So you kind of have to know what your computer can handle. If it can't handle the 4K, then you're going to have to go with the HD setting. It's still going to look good, just not quite as crisp as the uh, 4K. And the other benefit of having 4K is that you can crop in in post uh, production and be able to do more. And the picture will still be really, really clear. So, uh, but if you don't have the computer the, that will handle it, you're going to have to go with the HD. Next on our list is HFR settings. And this is all about setting slow-mo. The lower the number, the higher the quality. And you'll notice right now I've got the frame rate set at 240. If you go to 480 or 960, the quality of the image is degraded quite a bit and it also crops in a lot. So you can have a much smaller image. I cannot honestly imagine I'll ever use those, but you never know. But for now, we're just going to set that at, um, what am I trying to say? Oh, we're going to set that at 240. Keep everything else the way it is. We're going to go back one more. Nothing else to change here. Now, Let's go on to tab two, page two. This is the, the uh, movie tab. Everything here, we're going to keep the same. Now, when it comes to AF drive speed and tracking sensitivity, leave those as fast and responsive right now. You may find in the future that that's a little bit twitchy. You might want to dial that down, but you can, this is a great place to start because obviously you want things to be like this uh, as much as possible. So keep those for fast and responsive now. Keep in mind that if, if you seem, your camera seems to be hunting a little bit, that you might want to dial that back a little. And you could just hit this, the um, center button there. You'll see you've got fast, normal, slow, Never go to slow. It'll, it would be if you did dial it back. You'd want maybe go to want to go to normal, but otherwise, keep it fast. Okay, let's go on to page three and down to the audio record level. Obviously, you want to have audio recording on. We're making movies after all, so you want to have audio on and audio record level. You're going to want to adjust this depending on the type of microphone that you're using. You can see the speaking levels. You can see things bouncing around as I'm speaking right now. If you're going to use the built-in mic that's on top of the camera, you're probably going to want to set this at 25 or 26. You can see that I've got it at 25 right now. If you use a shotgun type of mic, you may want to change that to a uh, negative, bump it down to 12, or maybe it's not bump down, but move it down to 12. Or if you're using a lav mic, you may wish to even move it down farther to around a five. You definitely don't want those, the meters reading any higher than you see what I've got. Somewhere around negative 12, negative 6, maybe up to negative 3, but you try to stay out of the red completely. It doesn't sound good. 
Now, obviously, this is going to be dependent on uh, a number of factors, typically your voice. You know, if you've got a, a booming voice like I do, you might want to bump it down a little bit. If your voice is quiet, you might have to jump up a little bit. You just have to kind of play with these things. Um, audio dis level display, you want to have that on. Wind noise reduction off. Steady shot, which is Sony's name for stabilization. Set it to, um, I set it to, to active. The stabilization at active tends to crop in, but I've got long arms and I also use a tripod you know, selfie kind of thing, so it moves it away from me. I can get away with using active. Let us now move on to page four, still in tab two. And on page four, we're going to keep everything as you see it. We're not going to change anything. A word on record lamp. Record lamp is this right here. I don't have, I'm not recording anything obviously, but that glows red and it's a great thing to have on when you're recording yourself. Uh, there's nothing worse than doing something and then realizing you haven't recorded it. So that's really great. Now, you can always turn that off. If you're someplace where you want to be more stealthy, uh, you know, you can, the, if you're in a, oh, I don't know, a museum or a cathedral or something like that where they don't want you to be filming, it would be silly to have the red light glowing and give yourself away. So you didn't hear that from me, but <laughs> that's what I would, that's what I do at any rate. Uh, record lamp should be on. Movie with shutter should be on. Let us now move on to page five. We're going to leave everything on page five as you see it. Page six. This is the zoom. On zoom setting, some people only go with optical zoom. Most people say don't use digital. I'm here to tell you though, clear image zoom is awesome. So, I don't know how Sony does it, but they've got it down to where you can use digital zoom uh, and it looks great. Um, so this clear image zoom gives you an extra little bit of reach when you zoom in. And well, you know, try it for yourself. See if you, see if you like it. But I, 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 I'm telling you, it really looks good. And then zoom speed, we also want that. We want that to be fast. You don't want, you don't want that thing. Oh my gosh, slow motion. It does take a, a while. So stick with that. On page seven, this is going to determine what you see on your LCD screen when you are shooting and as such it's a very personal thing i suggest playing with it to see what you like <clears throat> i like having displaying all info histogram and level it gets very very crowded if you put much more on there but that again that's up to you zebra settings I recommend using Zebra. Not everybody likes it. Again, one of those things you're going to have to try out if you've never used it before. <clears throat> I also leave it at 100. What do the Zebra stripes do? Well, they, they tell you if you're overexposed or not. So the more stripes you have, the more overexposed you are. What could be bad about this? It's really, really helpful. You change some of your settings on the fly and stripes go away exposure is set um, grid lines i like to have grid lines set 
and I set it for the rule of thirds grid, you have these choices. You know, you could always turn it off if you don't feel like you don't need it, but I really do like having that there. It just really helps when you're composing a shot. Now we're on page eight, custom keys. And the top one is all for photo uh, is all for photographs so and we're, this isn't about photography this is about video so we're going to skip down to number two the custom key which is all about video and this is the way i have things set up so you can stop the video and copy this down of course like so much in videography photography this is all about personal preference so you might find that you want to change things as you use the camera more. You'll notice how I have it set. Custom it, number one is the product showcase set, which is pretty much standard. Then number two, and you, you can look at the picture and see which, which these refer to, is ND filter, something you're going to use a lot when you're outside. Number three I have set for the audio record level and number four is for ISO. Moving down the page. Function menu set we'll talk about later. Function of touch operation. Leave that at touch tracking. And movie button obviously we want also. Finally we're on to page nine, and on page nine, we're just going to leave everything as you see it. Let's go back a moment to those custom keys. When you get into this, all you have to do to set it however you want is to hit the center button on the scroll wheel, and it will give you choices. You can scroll up, scroll down, scroll left, right, to whatever pleases you, and enter it. It's that simple, all right? Next up are the memory functions, and there are two of them, and these are so, so helpful to help you do things quickly on the fly. Let's take a look at these. The first memory is for 4K at 24 frames per second, and this is the best setting for shooting uh, while you're on the go, where you, when you're talking, uh, you're talking to the camera. Um, and this is probably going to, well, not probably, this will be your most used setting. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're using this setting, you will not be able to slow it down in uh, post-processing. The second memory is for slow motion, it's for your b-roll, and we're going to set that to 120 frames per second, and that's going to be in HD. Setting this up ahead of time is going to make it so easy to shift from one to the other. Won't have to be going back into the settings all the time. You're going to love it. Let's do that now. So, first thing you want to do is go to tab 2, page 1. Remember, use your FM, FM. And when you get to page 1, make sure that you have your file format set to XAVC 4K and 24 uh, frames per second, 100M. This should already be set because we've done it before. Now press the menu and let's go to the main display. We need here we need to look down at the bottom and you'll notice here we've got TV. You can also switch that to AV. Right now we want to make sure that that is TV and look at this and make sure that it says 150th press the bottom of the scroll wheel make sure that that is as low as it can go we want it to 1 f 1.8 we also want to make sure that our iso is 125 now return to the menu 
go to tab 1 using our FN button and we want page 4 select memory and notice it's already pre-populated memory 1 and it's saying 1 50th f1.8 ISO 125 24 frames per second all you have to do is hit enter and it's going to tell you that it's registered boom just like that now we need to return to tab 2 and we need to be on page 1 and now we're going to change this going to go down to file format because we now remember we're setting up memory 2. So we want to change this to XAVC SHD and we want to go down and I've already got it set up so you can see that it's changing it. We want 120p 100m. Exit the menu again. Look down at the bottom we want to make sure that it says here, because we want to double the frame weight, we want to make sure that this says 2 50th. Okay, 1 2 50th, excuse me, 1, yeah, 1 2 50th. Everything else, F1.8, ISO 125. Perfect. I'll go back into the menu. And once again, go to tab 1, page 4, and now we want to move to the second memory. Again, look at the top. You can see that it says 1 to 50th, F1.8, 120 frames per second. Hit the center button, and once again, it's registered, and now you are all set in your memories. Okay, so how do you access these things once you're out in the field and shooting? Well, that's really pretty straightforward. Remember that mode button I was talking about earlier? Press mode, and here you have that pop up. And now what you're going to do is you want to scroll till you get to MR, Memory Recall. Once you're there, hit that select button in the center, and here we are on the memory page. To choose which memory, you're going to just hit your scroll wheel, either left or right. Notice right now, memory 1 is 1 50th, 24 frames per second. If I go to 2, now I'm at 120 frames per second, 100, 1 over 2 50th as my shutter speed and then you just select whatever you wish to use at that moment. It is so quick, so easy, boom, just like that. We're getting close to the end of the setup, all right? Next thing we need to do is we need to go back into the menu, and we need to go to tab 2, and we want to go to page 8, and go down to Function Menu Set. Notice at the top, those function menus are for photography. The bottom section is what we want. And like so much, this is all going to be about your personal preference. I don't have very much set. The very first one you'll see that I have right now is for steady shot. And I can toggle this easily between active and standard. Um, I also have underneath, whoops, I also have underneath the frame rate. So if I do go into the super slow mo, I can easily change that as well. Everything else I've left 
the way it came from the factory. You play around with it, see with other things that you might want to change. It's, you know, it's so much your personal preferences. Whew, we've done it. Now keep in mind, and I've said this multiple times, so much of this is, you know, personal preference. So over time you may wish to change things, then that's fine, whatever works for you. I'm not going to be offended. Um, so with just a little bit of effort, you can set this up and it will save you so much time. It'll make things so much quicker and easier. And you're going to find that capturing great content is just simplified after you, you know, it, it's going to take a little bit. You're going to have to, because you have to remember some of these moves, but after you get it down, boom. Hey, if you found this helpful at all, please consider subscribing. Just click that big red subscribe button and don't forget, click that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever we put up new things in this particular series on the ZV-1. Leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next one.